<clears throat> Hello, physics students. This is a lab on friction. We are going to find the coefficient of friction between this <clears throat> block of wood and this uh, <clears throat> board, this plane. Uh, first, it's going to be horizontal. <clears throat> we're going to pull it from rest, and then we're going to pull it at constant velocity to read the force on those spring scales. When my lovely assistant comes to help me, I will be moving the blocks while she's videoing. So while we're setting up for that, we found the mass of the blocks. I can find it two ways. Number one, I found it on the balance, the triple beam balance, which is a good way to find it. I also just <coughs> pulled it up with a spring scale and you can see the mass there. And there's a picture that you will see very shortly. Of course, <coughs> the way a spring scale works is by Hooke's law, F equals KX. The more the spring pulls, the more force or weight or mass is on it. The heavier the mass, the heavier the weight, then it'll, it's proportional. So that's why these spring scales are in a linear uh, scale here. So this one's going between zero, sorry, between zero and one newtons, and that's uh, 10 marks. So that's like 0.1 newtons up to 0.9 and one newton. And this is a different scale. So this is a 2.5 newton max scale. This is going from 0 to 0.5 with 10 marks, so each mark is 0.05. So 0 0.05, 0 0.1, 0 0.15, 0 0.2, and 0.25, and so forth, all the way down the scale. So which one do I use? Well, I'm going to use the one that doesn't overload the scale that has the maximum accuracy. So sometimes I'll use this one up to 5 newtons, and sometimes I'll use this one up to 2.5 newtons. So we'll use both. <coughs> Stage 1 is to find the horizontal force that either starts this block from rest to start moving, the static friction, or pull it along at constant velocity, the kinetic friction, so mu s and mu k. And then I'm going to lift this up and we're going to find the angle it needs, the component of gravity that's at an angle that will cause this block to move as well. So we'll find mu s another way. So we'll find mu s horizontally, mu k horizontally, and mu s on an inclined plane, which is a wonderful problem to use. Everyone does those inclined plane problems. <clears throat> of course, an inclined plane uh, is, a t is a simple machine, like a screw, it's a lever. So we'll be seeing more of those simple machines later in the year. So right now I'm just measuring the length of this board and I will measure how high it is so I can get the angle for the inclined plane. But I'm just gonna pause right here this appears to be 125. I can't see very well without my glasses, so I'll pause that and I'll take a picture of this. I'm starting it. Is that oh, it? Yeah. Okay, earlier I lifted this up so I could find the weight of this item, which is about. Oh, it's jiggling. It's about four newtons. But over here, you can actually find the mass. And I actually found the mass on here. There's a good picture of this. And we can use F equals MA or weight equals MG. To find that, but we'll do it both ways. <clears throat> I want this to start from rest. And I'm going to find the force to, a, to get this thing in motion. An object at motion tends, an object in, at rest tends to stay at rest. An object in motion tends to stay in motion until acted on by an external force, which I'm going to measure that force with the scale. So I'm going to slowly, but not microscopically slowly, I'm going to tug, and I'll see that it's going to tug, and then it's going to jerk backwards. So I'm going to read the maximum force it requires to pull it. That's about one or two newtons. I'll do slow-mo to prove that. So if it's between one and two newtons, I'm going to use a more accurate scale so I can get a better reading. And what I used to do is I used to jerk this and then read it, put my finger there. But now with the iPad video, we can pause it and see what it's going to be. So I'm going to do it about three times. Ready? And it's jerking because this board is not completely smooth. Neither is the block. It's two pieces of wood and there's imperfections. <clears throat> I did a rough sanding of these boards just to get close. And you can tell I'm not, I'm trying to get away from the knots, so I'm not going over here. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So let me do it again. We'll get a couple of shots of this. 
and I'll Shots edit, or... edit okay. a couple of videos. You can tell I'm not, I'm trying to get away from the knots, so I'm not going over here. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So let me do it again. We'll get a couple of shots of this. And I'll shots edit, or... edit. Okay. a couple of video. Just keep it going. Okay. And I can click. I'll get a couple of good numbers. So, Mr. Hood, I have a question. Yes. Why is it jerking? What? No, that wasn't my question. Yes, I'm totally awesome. <laughs> that wasn't my question either. Okay. Why, Hi. when you were just holding it there on the board, did it register a reading of one Newton? Just holding it. It wasn't even Oh, moving. you mean I was pulling it? Did you not see my big whoa, flex muscle pulling that? I guess you didn't see that. So, I was starting to tug it, and then it jerked so it's reading the maximum force to to start in motion some books call it fs max i just call it ff it's the friction force so okay so I, that's what it's that is. an object at rest tends to stay at rest it wants to be at rest an object in motion tends to stay in motion so when i measure in a moment um, the kinetic friction it's going to be smoother and it's going to be less because static friction is greater than kinetic because once you're in motion, you tend to stay in motion. It requires less force to keep you in motion. And you all know this from your, uh, from your lives. Once you've started exercising or started doing your homework, it's easier to keep going. It is hard. If you're just finished Netflixing, and you're like, gee, I should really study for this physics exam, which you know you really can't study for physics exams. All you can do is do like 10 or 15 problems and say, yes, I'm confident in working these problems. <laughs> you can't really study for physics. I'm going to cram for a free body diagram. Well, not really. you got to be, just basically work all the problems in class and not copy off everybody all the time and not watch the teacher do them. Watching me do it is cool. I am pretty awesome to watch, but you need to work some on your own. So you're going to work these on your own. Okay. Okay, stop. Go. Roll. Ready? This is the constant velocity in the UK.
And that's why it's jerking, because there's jerkiness in these knots and the in imperfections of the wood. And you may say, why did I screw through these together? To give it enough mass to have a measurable force Why does it not move? Because there's friction. Opposing the motion. Now, gravity wants to pull it down. Do your free body diagram, you'll see the this component and this component. of I call it the parallel and perpendicular components. It's the x, y Flip at sideways. an angle. Mm -hmm. So it's the x angle, y angle, the rotation axes. Who cares? Um, when I lift it, it's going to start moving. Right there. So that's what I want to measure is right there. I'm going to do it about two or three times. So the zero here, it's zero on the on the desk. So I'm going to read the bottom of the board, not the top of the board. Okay. Forty-eight point something. Okay, I'll do it again. It'd be nice to have another partner over here. Uh, with all this COVID stuff, we need a full-time videographer. Yes, we do. But whatever. We got some nice equipment. The, the iPads work well for videoing chem chemistry and physics labs. Here we go. Let's try it again. That was like forty-eight point something. Ready? That was about 51. Now you may say to yourself, self, why was there a difference? Because there's imperfections in the wood where I put it. Maybe I raised it faster or slower. I try to do it consistently, but as all teachers know, you can't do everything consistently. You do as best you can. Here we go. Can you see that? There Is we that go. Mm-hmm. Raise your hand if you're sure. <laughs> Is that 49? Mm -hmm. That's 48 points. 48? 48.8 or yeah. we'll, 48. We'll get a picture of that. That's three pretty good values. Now here's the fun part. Drawing the free body diagram of this thing and using the vectors sine and cosine component vectors to find all this good stuff. Now, when you're done, I'm going to show you a cool trick. I was like, oh, that's a cool trick. It's like, mm, if you know a little bit of uh, pre-calc and your, your trig identities, you can do it very simply. In fact, you can do it without the mass because any mass would work. All you need is a couple of numbers and the mass is not one of them. You may say, well, why did I measure the mass? Because my students like to plug in numbers all the time, but you could do it algebraically and the, you, would, you will later see that the M's will cancel. So, spoiler alert. Don't, don't give it away. Oh, give it away, give it away now. Give it away, <laughs> give it away, give it away now. Lift this up. <laughs> when I lift this up, why does it not move? Because there's friction. Opposing the motion. Now, Gravity wants to pull it down. Do your free body diagram, you'll see the this component and this component of I call it the parallel and perpendicular components. It's the x y Flip at sideways. an angle. Mm -hmm. So it's the x angle y angle, the rotation axes. Who cares? Um, when I lift it, it's going to start moving. Right there. So that's what I want to measure is right there. I'm going to do it about two or three times. So the zero here, it's zero on the on the desk, so I'm going to read the bottom of the board, not the top of the board, okay? Like 48 point something. Okay, I'll do it again. 
It'd be nice to have another partner over here. Uh, with all this COVID stuff, we need a full-time videographer. Yes, we do. But whatever. We got some nice equipment. The, the iPads work well for videoing chem chemistry and physics labs. Here we go. Let's try it again. That was like 48 point something. Ready? That was about 51. Now you may say to yourself, self, why was there a difference? Because there's imperfections in the wood where I put it. Maybe I raised it faster or slower. I try to do it consistently, but as all teachers know, you can't do everything consistently. You do as best you can. Here we go. Can you see that? There we go. Mm-hmm. Raise your hand if you're sure. <laughs> Is that 49? Mm -hmm. That's 48 points. 48? 48.8 or yeah. we'll, 48 we'll get a picture of that. That's three pretty good values. Now here's the fun part. Drawing the free body diagram of this thing and using the vectors sine and cosine component vectors to find all this good stuff. Now when you're done, I'm going to show you a cool trick. I was like, oh, that's a cool trick. It's like, mm, if you know a little bit of uh, pre-calc and your, your trig identities, you can do it very simply. In fact, you can do it without the mass, because any mass would work. All you need is a couple of numbers, and the mass is not one of them. You may say, well, why did I measure the mass? Because my students like to plug in numbers all the time. But you could do it algebraically. And the, you, would, you will later see that the M's will cancel. So, spoiler alert. Don't, don't give it away. Oh, give it away, give it away now. Give it away, <laughs> give it away, give it away now.